table for the order of confession and forgiveness. In the remembrance of our holy baptism, we begin this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. If we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things that you have done and things that you have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives all our sins strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Our gathering here.
continue with our period. Live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, 
all the families of nations shall bow down before God. For your dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. For their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's, God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The second reading is found in John chapter 4, beginning at the seventh verse. <clears throat> Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they will abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reach perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who not, do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God who they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Hey, Linus, and Guy, you want to go outside with me for a while? Oh, maybe you'll hear it, maybe you won't. <laughs> you go outside here? This way. Go this way. We're going to go outside. Come on, here we go. Branches come out, and then more branches. 
branches and every swell of baby wing and leaves and the sunshine helps all that too, right? So it takes a lot of things to make this tree grow, right? And everything is important and they all have to stay connected together because what would happen if there was no sunshine? It would die. Yeah, without sunshine, it would die. So a little bit later, we're going to talk about that, about Jesus being somebody we're supposed to stay connected to so that we have more happiness in our hearts. Okay? So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the beautiful trees, for the sunshine, and the earth, and the water, and the bees that come. Thank you that you connect us together. Thank you for thy and minus. And may they always know that they are connected to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Here we go, guys. Head back in. Here we go. Well, awesome, you're, you're learning about trees in school, so you have the answers. That's the way it goes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We just talked about the bees, not the birds. <laughs> I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you do not know nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thank you. Um, I, I made a discovery that um, if I start here, for some reason, it's easier to go there. Here we go. <clears throat> Beloved of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I was outside there with Linus and Guy, we were talking about that tree. And we were talking about how important every part of creation is for that tree. How that tree needs the ground, the earth, the fertile soil. How the tree needs to be watered. And as the tree grows and we see the uh, leaves come out, the tree then collects the sun, which puts nourishment back into the ground. And then, you know, that tree bears those funny red uh, berries that the birds like and they get drunk on. I don't, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, for that to happen, 
there needs to be some pollination. And that's where the bees come in. When we plant our flowers here, in some time here, you know, I saw some people planting yesterday, is that you maybe go buy that small flower and you put it into a pot, pat it down, make it comfortable, and you give it water, and you put it out in the sun, and pretty soon, the whole pot is filled with that flower. All living things are interdependent upon others. All of creation, including ourselves, are interdependent upon one another and upon the world. Just like we need sunshine, we need water, we need good to be grounded good, to grow, and so on. Our gospel lesson today is that familiar one where Jesus declares to be the vine and we are the branches. We are the, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And Jesus says, if you stay connected to me, if you stay connected to that vine, you will have, a, you will produce fruit. In other words, Things will come, life will come out of you that has a way of touching other people's lives. But Jesus says we must abide. We must stay connected to that vine. So it's like a tree. The tree needs all of the other elements around to grow and survive. We need to stay connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, that we might grow spiritually, that our hearts might truly believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead. We might truly believe in that unconditional love and so on. But we must stay connected to that line. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I'm going to assume the tree has to do a little bit of work to become what it is. I don't think it just gets to stand there and everything happens for it. It's got to have a process, the tree itself. For us to be connected, truly connected to Jesus the vine, to abide there, we must do those things. And I say must in a way that we, if we do not do the things, then we soon start to wither. And what things? We all know what those things are that keeps us connected to the vine. You know, a little prayer. Or now that the weather is nice and if you happen to be near a lake, or whatever, just sitting outside quietly, reflecting on God and the wonder of God, staying connected. Staying connected as we gather for worship, as we receive the sacrament that says their sins are forgiven, to walk away from, well, not now, to, 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 as, as you have received it, to be joyful, to rejoice. After we have received this sacrament, we should not be frowning. We should be smiling from ear to ear because we've once again renewed that connection that we've once again become abiding close to that vine. And it says then that 
that the vine grower uh, prunes. When God sees good things going inside, well, let's prune a little bit so more good things can happen. As we know, when we prune and trim trees, they become more productive. But then there's the part in this passage that talks about the branches that are cut off that wither and die and get burned eventually. This is not a passage of judgment at all. We think it is. We think it is. If we get cut off and burned, you know, that, that we have been judged for not staying connected. No. We then, in hearing that, we realize that by not staying connected, we wither. And as we watch branches or trees or buds off the flowers when you, you trim them, now they're okay for a little while, then they start to wither and die. So it's not about judgment. It's about making the choice to abide in the vine. To abide there. So that we don't wither. So that our spiritual lives stay strong. That our relationship with God stays strong. As we continue, as the, the branch takes from the vine, that nourishment, that we gain that nourishment, that spiritual nourishment, from our Lord. And it's about abiding. Now, in abiding, in staying connected, it did talk about being fruitful. And we understand that as being following the command. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. So in that being productive and in, in, in um, being fruitful, it's about our staying connected. It's about in our connection. We ask, we seek, how might we be more fruitful in our lives as individuals or maybe a group? We also hear in this passage a message to the church. To us here in Salem and all of Christianity across the world. That the church needs to work at staying connected to the vine. Not just going through the motion. But asking the vine what it is that we are to do that we might be fruitful in our community and across the world. New Salem hears that call as we are so generously support the many different ministries in our community, either financially or physically volunteering, or donating, and so on. We do that. But isn't there, do we not need to stay connected and look at the fruitfulness that needs to go beyond our community? To be part of the fruitfulness of others that we support. Annual meeting. Someone says, Are you going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? Yeah. An issue, something that 
will be a strong conversation. When we talk about the budget, will be benevolent. And we have some strong feelings about that. Some want to say, no, we keep everything here and we take care of ourselves first and foremost. So, you know, we do need to take care of ourselves. Won't deny that. But there's also, as we as a congregation are connected to that vine and are called upon to be fruitful, it needs to go beyond just Bemidji and Beltrami County. And we'll talk more about that. But I know that's a sore spot in this congregation. But the scriptures, the gospel today is calling us to add to prayerfully, to ask the vine. How is it that we as a people here might be more fruitful even beyond our doors and our community and so on? That fruitfulness is happening far beyond our looking. <laughs> but it takes courage, it takes time, it takes commitment. I asked Tracy earlier this morning if I could use her as an example. And she graciously said yes. Had she said no, I probably would have just did it. No. <laughs> not, not really. Tracy, we all know, has an absolutely beautiful you know, Tracy works at that. She has a voice lesson every week. Because Tracy believes in the depths of her heart that this is a gift that God has given to her. And that it is her responsibility, or however we want to word that, to continue to make that grow and be stronger <clears throat> that we might enjoy that gift and the world beyond. It takes work. It takes willingness to stay connected to the vine and following the vine's leading and being willing to take those steps of faith. So, the assignment for this week is really easy. You'll be able to remember it, too. Um, so you don't have to write it down. Um, is this. Take some time this week, wherever you might find yourself, on the deck, by the lake, in your easy chair, and reflect and rejoice how you are connected to the vine. And listen that the vine might speak, giving direction for you, for us all, to be fruitful in the world in which we live. Amen. It's the end of our hymn today.
Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Okay, let's just wave our hands, share peace. Actually, turn around and look at somebody, okay? <laughs> or the peace, yes. Okay. You know, that's, I tell you what, that's better than us walking around, isn't it? <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Body and blood of Christ for the people of Christ. You may be seated and we will bring communion to you. Hey, Clyde, are you back there? You want to help come help me? What are you missing, though? <laughs> Thank you. 
I invite you to stand as you're able for our communion blessing. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and then bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses of your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I invite you to open your hearts and to receive God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for our, our sending hymn. And again, um, Guests, visitors, any who are in or are not interested in staying to the annual um, meeting, I invite you. I'll, I will greet you at the door, and then we will begin um, our sending. <laughs> Thank you. 